No matter how you're moving your cattle, the principles stay the same. It's just the techniques that vary. Anytime we're moving cattle, we want to fight the urge to go around behind them and just push them. Try to ride straight through the cattle, straight lines and ride like you're riding through the back end of the cattle. It gets them to going forward, which causes the ones in front of them to move forward. And then you have this, they'll, they'll get up and move a lot like they leave and go to water. If you have calves at their side, it gives those cows time enough to find their calf, pick their calf up and go with them. If you just come in and start yelling and screaming and chousing them, they all run off and it's like pandemonium at the mall. Nobody knows where their calves are and, and a lot of times you'll have calves running back and real trouble there. So slowing down at the start of getting your cattle to move and mother, take more time there, it'll save you time at the end. When a cow has a calf, it, whatever handling the cow has had, she understands that. And so when you ride in and pressure a cow, she moves off. Sometimes at a high speed, sometimes at a low speed. But the calf, he hasn't been trained. And so a lot of times we'll unmother the calf from the cow because the cow responds and leaves her calf. So the first time I get contact or if I get a chance, I will try to teach that calf to move just like his mother. And just a little bit of time, you know, 30 seconds, couple of minutes spent moving a calf, teaching him to take pressure from the left side, the right side, move off straight, stop, turn, all those things that the mother already knows or should know, that'll re be real rewarding in the future when you're handling those cows and to keep them mothered and paired up. I, I like being horseback and I like using horses with cattle. I ride a lot of colts and the main things I try to get for working cattle low stress. I'm not talking cutting horses here or roping horses or anything like that. Just moving cattle in a low stress manner. The first thing is, is have that horse calm and relaxed. If you can get your horse to stand still with his head level, without swishing his tail, the cattle will settle and relax. But if he's jumping up and down and whinnying and, and trying to go back to the barn or whatever, you're gonna have a hard time settling those cattle. The next thing is, is they, he just pretty much has to be go, able to go straight forward stop in a straight line, back up. Now that's real important to be able to stop and back up because that's how we take the pressure off. We move into cattle, we back our horses up and take the pressure off. It's nice to be able to turn them real precise so you can always keep that, that distance that you need to maintain the proper flight zone or the pressure zone. And you also got to get to where you can get to the balance point with the horse's head or shoulder or wherever you need it to be. The horse just allows you to be in position a little quicker, a little easier, and a little more precisely than you would be on a four-wheeler. Uh, anytime you get a horse out of a trot, you're probably going too fast, working cows. And there's, that goes against the grain of a lot of folks. But working cattle correctly, you're gonna be at a walk or trot most of the time. And the trot would just be to reposition yourself around a set of cattle. Now, if you wanna lope to a set of cows, that's one thing, but you have to slow down when you get there just like you would on a four-wheeler let the cattle know you're coming, see how they're gonna respond. You don't wanna just flush them with a horse or a four-wheeler. So when you do that, I, I still make the zigzag behind the cattle when I'm working on horseback. When they start going the direction I want them to go, I tend to move out away from them, out to the side where I can control the front from a distance. So it's really not any different. The main thing on a horse, you're not causing noise and noise is one of the most distracting things to a cow. So that's one reason I try to stay as far away from them with a four-wheeler as I can. I might actually work a little closer on a horse than I would a four-wheeler, but uh, not much. There are some cattle that walk real fast, four or five miles an hour, and some cattle that walk real slow. Normal cattle probably walk two or three miles an hour. A horse probably walks four or five miles an hour. So what happens is we're always pushing on those cattle with a horse. If we're just walking in right straight behind them, this is why I like to ride zigzags, like zigzags like a good hanging tree cow dog or a border collie dog would do. They zigzag back and forth. So they aren't going faster than the cattle. When we push those, down, those weak cattle, like a foot rod animal that we'll have a lot of times have to move somewhere in a herd or a weaker cow, when we keep pushing on her, pretty soon she either gets mad and starts fighting us or she just quits and lays down, and it's just not a good situation. And what that is, is we're just trying to move them too fast. And if we can't, if we can't slow down enough for the slowest animals,
then we better leave them back and come back and get them or something so we can keep up with the rest of the herd. The main advantage I see to four-wheelers is that if you're not uh, adept at riding a horse or something like that, it allows you to, to cover more country than you would on foot. There's not any real advantage to using one of them as far as managing movement in cattle because you can do everything better either on foot or on a horse because you can reposition yourself quicker. I don't know if you noticed in the film, I would turn away from the cattle. The big problem with four-wheelers, people don't go out past them far enough when they're making their sweeps back and forth behind the cattle. And if you turn toward them, you have a tendency to turn cattle out away from the drive. And so you either have to go out and turn back away from the cattle and come back behind them or go way out to the side and make that turn and then come back straight. So they're a little more difficult to, to be in the right position on a four-wheeler, but they're, they're a tool that a lot of people have, so you need to learn how to use them. But they're not something you're supposed to chase cattle with. And that's the main thing that I see people misusing them is they try to run cattle with them and get going too fast. When you're putting bulls out or gathering bulls, we still use horses for that uh, as far as uh, as pasture sorting, uh, you know, the four-wheelers don't work for that at all. Uh, so horses are still a real advantage there. Uh, maybe the, the biggest advantage of the four-wheeler in, in this system of rotating cattle in the, during the growing season is uh, we can get to the site where we're going uh, quicker. And, and then we can, once we get the cattle moved, why we can get back to doing something else quicker. Uh, it's just a time saver for certain jobs on the ranch. It, it, it isn't going to replace the horse completely, but for this particular job of rotating cattle in the summertime, why it works pretty well. Most everybody needs to get off a four-wheeler when they get in, in a corral situation. Once the cattle come in out of a pasture or a large trap area or a water lot or whatever you want to call it, you probably need to get off of it. Otherwise, you wind up making too many moves and too much racket. And that allows you transition from gathering the cattle with a four-wheeler to being on foot, which is going to be in the corrals, you're going to be on foot because you're not going to work them in the corral. Most of us don't think about that transition. If you work in cattle horseback or on a four-wheeler, that's what they're used to. Until you get on the ground, that's a totally different game to them. If they've not ever been worked on foot, a lot of people have cattle have never seen anybody on the ground. You need to be able to tell that when you walk into that set of cattle. And if you're horseback, then you need to get on the ground, on foot, and lead the horse with you, to where that's a, a slow transition. And they get used to you being on the ground, but that horse is still there as kind of a comfort zone for them. On a four-wheeler, kind of the same thing, but it's more abrupt sometimes because you can't let that four-wheeler go with you. And so if you just jump off a four-wheeler and go to hollering or running at cattle, they're not ready for that. So it may be very stressful. Some of them, it may be what they're used to. So it just depends, and you have to read each set of cattle differently. We're spread out in our operations. We've got four or five different places, and, and um, we, we move a lot of cattle down the highway. And um, it's better than putting them on a truck and hauling them short distances of one or two miles. So we do a lot of trailing. And, and um, with that comes some uh, irritation, I guess, to some of the neighbors or people that drive the highway with uh, having to go through cattle drives. So uh, we've, uh, over the years, learned that it works better for us. Um, we probably use a, one extra person to uh, move cattle. But uh, our cattle, we try and move down one side of the road. Um, we put a lot of horseback guys up the side and, and um, and uh, keep the cattle moved to one side. And there's always a side that cattle would rather uh, walk up, um, whether it be the right side or the left side, but it kind of depends and, and, uh, on where we are and kind of depends on how many driveways we got to go by or how many gates we got to go past. So we send people ahead, but we always uh, keep riding the sides of the cattle, keep the cattle flowing, keep them spread out. It sure makes for good neighbors when we uh, don't all just sit in the back and, and tell stories and and uh, let those cattle bunch up and take the risk of uh, getting a car dented or, or something like that. So traffic is a big thing that we have to deal with. So it's easier for us to get those cars through the traffic. To, uh, uh, we'll ask them to move to the other side of the road. We'll hold up some cars while some cars cleared. 
So it is kind of, you're kind of doing a traffic deal and you're moving cattle at the same time, but um, we get along pretty good with the neighbors and, and have gotten along real well in the past and uh, we keep those cattle moved out to the side for them.